In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, Amen. I'd like to welcome you all to our Perseverance Family Conversation, and as always, it's great to be with you. So we like to start off our conversation by inviting Mary to be with us. Mary has many titles. Mary is the mother of God. Mary is the mother of the church. And Mary is the mother of each and every one of us. And also when we pray the Hail Holy Queen, we invoke Mary as our life, our sweetness, and our hope. So let's invite Mary to be with us, to pray with us, and to pray for us. As we say the prayer that she loves most, and that's the Hail Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and bless the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Now, my friends, let's turn to our spiritual director. Our spiritual director is the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit has many titles. He is the paraclete, He's also known as the gift of gifts. Holy Spirit is also known as the counselor. He's also known as the consoler. He's also known as the sweet guest of our souls. And the Holy Spirit is our interior master. By this we mean that we really don't know how to pray as we ought. But good news, the Holy Spirit intercedes with ineffable groans so that we can say, Abba. Abba, which means Daddy or Father. Abba, which means Daddy or Father. So let's invite the Holy Spirit to be with us, to give us a lot of light in our intellect. And to set our hearts on fire with the love of God. So let's pray together to the Holy Spirit as we enter into our novena in preparation for Pentecost today. Come Holy Spirit. Fill the hearts of your faithful and enkindle within us the fire of your divine love. Send forth your spirit and they shall be created. And thou shalt renew the face of the earth. Let us pray. O God, it did instruct the hearts of your faithful by the light of the Holy Spirit. Grant us by the same Spirit we may be truly wise. And ever rejoice in his consolation through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our Lady Fatima, pray for us. St. Joseph, pray for us. St. Michael the Archangel, pray for us. St. Gabriel, pray for us. St. Raphael, pray for us. St. Ignatius of Loyola, pray for us. St. Faustina, pray for us. St. Augustine of Canterbury, pray for us. All God's angels and saints, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
The family that prays together stays together. Welcome you to our Perseverance family. And as always, I would like to encourage you because of the prayers that I'll offer for you in the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. The Holy Sacrifice of the Mass is by far the greatest of all prayers. It's the greatest of all prayers, the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. So I'd like to pray in a special way for these intentions. First, I'd like to pray that all of you experience one of the fruits of Easter. We're still in the Easter season. That fruit will be, you'll experience joy. Not only joy, but St. Ignatius says, beg for intensissimo gozo, intense joy. But what does this joy come from? This joy comes from union with God. Mary, in the month of May, who dedicated to her, teaches us inner magnifica. Mary says, my soul does magnify the Lord. And my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. So Mary teaches us the true joy in, is encountered in our relationship with God our Savior. My second intention I'd like to pray for your families as well as your children. That you as parents would assume your responsibility as being the first teachers of your, of your children. Do not allow your children to be confused by the current errors that are being disseminated throughout our, through our country and throughout the world, especially in the realm of uh, human anthropology. God creates us in his image and likeness, and God created us male and female, Adam and Eve. We cannot capitulate or buckle under the pressure of modern liberal tendencies that want to confuse the gender of each and every one of us, either we're male or female, man or woman, boy or girl. Anything out this realm is against God's law, against common sense, and even we might even say diabolic. Diabolic. So be good shepherds to the sheep of your flock. The key to becoming a good shepherd of our flock is we have to be good sheep of Jesus, the good shepherd. My last intention, I'd like to pray for world peace, but especially I'd like to pray for world peace by striving in our lives to defend human life. Mother Teresa says, how can we presume to attain a world where there's peace if we're killing the most innocent of all members in our society? That would be the reality of abortion. Let's keep praying. Keep praying that Roe versus Wade will be overturned and that we will be able to eliminate abortion. You know, eliminate abortion, my friends. 
Because life, my friends, is a gift from God. Life is a gift from God. And life starts at the very moment of conception. So we are people of life. We are people of life. I have another intention I'd like to ask you to pray for. A few months ago, in a parish here in Southern California, in uh, it's, uh, the parish of St. Luke, in Temple City, they, they invited me to go and give a, a retreat. So this evening, I invite you to pray for me. And I'll be given like a mini retreat at the parish of St. Luke in Temple City. At 6 o'clock, I'll be celebrating the Mass. Then I'll give a talk on the Blessed Mother. And then I'll have a holy hour in which the people will be able to pray in front of the Blessed Sacrament. And I'll be available for confessions. If you'd like to go, you're more than welcome. So the Mass is at 6 o'clock in Temple City, which is near Alhambra. It's an up in the San Gabriel region. So I invite all of you to pray for this mini retreat. And then next Thursday, I'll be starting a consecration to Mary in the Church of St. Therese in Alhambra. If you'd like to go, you're more than welcome. A lot of activities, thanks be to God. So those are our prayer intentions. Let's place them on the altar that God would bless the work of our hands. As the psalm says, give, this, give success to the work of our hands. O Lord, give success to the work of our hands. So, still being in the month of May, Still being in the month of May, I'd like to give our brief Marian catechesis. Our brief Marian catechesis would be on this point. So much can be said about Mary. But I would say this, pray your rosary. Pray your rosary for many intentions. But especially pray for world peace and the family. Pope John Paul II of happy memory, when he published his apostolic letter, The Blessed Virgin Mary and the Rosary, 2002, he encouraged the whole world, starting with the families, to pray the rosary. And he mentioned especially two intentions. One would be for world peace. The other would be for the sake of the family. World Peace, uh, John Paul II wrote this shortly after the attack on the Twin Towers in New York City. Then he prayed, he invites us to pray for the family because the family is the domestic church. The family is the domestic church, and as well as the family is the basic building block of society. The family is the basic cell of society, the family. So that's our brief Mar Marian catechesis today, encouraging all of us to, to pray the rosary. And there are a lot of, there are a lot of obstacles. Uh, yesterday I said four rosaries. I try to pray 
as many rosaries as possible. Pray the rosary irrespective of how you feel. Pope St. John the Twenty-Third said that the only poor rosary is the rosary that was never prayed. And St. Alphonse de Liguori was once approached by a woman who was complaining about the rosary. She said, Father, every time I pray the rosary, I've got all these temptations. St. Alphonsus said that's a good sign because the devil is angry. The devil is angry because by the rosary we're going to be instrumental in saving many souls. We'll be instrumental in saving many souls, so pray the rosary. Remember the words of Father Patrick Payton, the rosary priest. He said, The family that prays together stays together, as well as a world at prayer is a world at peace. A world at prayer is a world at peace. So my friends, today, there's always a lot of things to cover, so I'd like to start by talking a little bit about the saint that we celebrate today. Well, one other thing. There's so many things that we have to talk about in our conversation, but I would have to say this, that we have to go back and recover those beautiful traditions that our parents and our grandparents had. Among which would be the practice of the Novena. Novena actually means nine days. Novena actually means nine days. St. Faustina Kowalska encouraged us to pray the Novena. She would make Novenas before Marian feast days. What she would do was, before the Immaculate Conception or the Assumption, she would actually, her Novena, she'd pray. She'd pray a thousand Hail Marys every day for nine days. That's uh you probably may not do that. The Filipinos have a custom of doing that also. Praying, uh, praying a thousand Hail Marys every day for nine days. Th a thousand Hail Marys every day for nine days. Well, you may not do that. But starting today, do something special for the Blessed Mother every day for nine days. So nine days from today, we celebrate Pentecost. Pentecost was the birthday of the church. Jesus ascends to heaven and he sends the apostles into the cynical of the upper room with Mary, the mother of God. In silence, in prayer and fasting, they're together for nine days and nine nights. And then on the ninth day, fire descended upon their heads and they were transformed into valiant soldiers of Christ. Let us go to that upper room of the Blessed Mother and the Apostles and let's pray for the coming of the Holy Spirit in our own lives. True that we have received the Holy Spirit through baptism and through confirmation the Holy Spirit and the gifts are fortified. But the presence and the gifts of the Holy Spirit can be dormant, meaning they could be asleep. We have to wake them up. It's a wake-up call. Let's wake up these gifts of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Wake up. Alarm clock time. Wake up. 
The Holy Spirit wants us to become saints. And John the 23rd says that the spiritual masterpieces of the Holy Spirit are the saints. Jesus says, be holy as your heavenly Father is holy. So start your Navina today. One way in which you can do it is make sure that you pray the rosary every day. Another way might be to go to Mass every day for nine days. Another might be to go to Mass and to pray the rosary. Double blessing. But do something to prepare yourself for the coming of the Holy Spirit, which is Pentecost and the birthday of the Church. So, yesterday we celebrated the feast day of St. Philip Neri. He prepared himself for the coming of the Holy Spirit on one occasion <clears throat> by going into the catacombs. The catacombs because St. Philip Neri was the second apostle of Rome. So he spent nine days and nine nights in the catacombs, which is that there are these underground tunnels that the early Christians built so they could be saved from the attack of the Roman persecutors. So Philip Neri, who's living in the 1500s, he spent nine days and nine nights in the catacombs. On the ninth day, something happened. A noise could be heard, and there was a ball of fire. Fireball. That entered into the catacomb. And Philip Mary, while he prayed, that ball of fire entered in his mouth into his heart. And his heart beat so fast. His heart was so on fire with the love of God, he would say, enough, Lord, enough, Lord, enough, Lord, otherwise Philip will die. His heart beat so fast that the thumping of his heart could be felt even a block away. Young men that had temptation against chastity would place their head over the heart of, of Philip Neri, and the temptation would disappear. When Philip died, his rib cage had protruded, and the bones, a couple of bones, were dislocated because of the force of the pumping of his heart and the fire that consumed him. He was indeed transformed into a real lover of Christ. Let's beg St. Philip Neri to pray for us that we would have our own Pentecost experience. That's the saint that we celebrate every year on May 26th. So today, my friends, we celebrate another saint and all, not all saints are perfect. The saint we celebrate today, his name is Saint Augustine of Canterbury. Not to be confused, when you hear Saint Augustine, usually we think about Saint Augustine, the son of Saint Monica, who was converted who wrote the Confessions and the City of God. He ends up by becoming the Bishop of Hippo in Africa, becoming one of the most famous fathers of the Church. That's St. Augustine of Hippo. Today we celebrate St. Augustine of Canterbury, so we got St. Augustine of Hippo, 
not hippopotamus, but hippo. Then we got St. Augustine of Canterbury. St. Augustine of Canterbury. What he's going to teach us is never to give up. On the Cale Clark program earlier this week, he had a documentarian, Eric Lydell, who was a young man that arrived at the Olympic Games in Paris in 1924. Then he's going to go to China to become a Christian missionary and die there in a concentration camp of brain cancer. He's instrumental for Chariots of Fire. Kel Clark spoke that the, the music behind it by Dave Angelis, he actually died. At, he was a Greek man who died at 79 just a few days ago. There's a scene in Chariots of Fire where Eric Lydell is running the 400 before he arrives at the Olympic Games. He's running side by side with other three runners. When he's running, one of the other runners gives him an elbow and he falls down. Eric Lydell gets up and he puts it in full gear. He passes one, passes second. Then the guy that knocked him down, he beat him by a which is probably a tenth of a second, and he collapses, gasping. He won the race, but he fell down. And I think that's symbolic of our lives. Our spiritual life is a marathon. It is. Our spiritual life is a marathon, and we're called to run the good race. We're called to run the good race. And if we fall down, let's get up. My founder used the words Nunc Chepi, Venerable Brunel and Terry. Nunc Chepi, which means if I fail, I have to just get up and start again. Unibra Sarah said, Siempre adelante, siempre adelante, nunca atrás. Always forward, always forward, never look backwards. Always forward, always forward, never look backwards. So, with respect to this saint that we celebrate today, St. Augustine of Canterbury, his life story is very interesting. So he was living at the time of a pope whose name is Saint Saint Gregory the Great. So Saint Gregory the Great had come in contact with some men from England, Angles, and he said they're not angles but they look like angels so Pope Gregory the Great was interested in trying to evangelize the people from England to plant the faith the Catholic faith there so what happened was uh, Pope Gregory had such a great respect for Augustine, who was an Italian monk and believed in his ability to do missionary work in England. So Augustine rounded up a, a team of missionaries to head toward England from Italy.
But as they were heading toward England, they were penetrated by fear because they were afraid of the waters, the fierce waters in the English Channel, as well as the fierce tribes of England. They're afraid that they're going to be brutally murdered by the fierce tribes of England. And guess what they did? As they were heading toward England, they made a U-turn. They made a U-turn and they... I found this on the web for how do you turn. Check it out. So they turned... They made a U-turn. They made a U-turn. They turned the opposite direction. And they headed they they headed back to England. So when they head back to England, Pope Gregory the Great meets them and he encourages them not to give up. Not to give up. So Augustine rounds up his team of missionaries and he returns to England. And he's going to be working there. He establishes a church there in Canterbury, which is the famous Canterbury Cathedral to this very day. And the work was very slow, very painful, some successes, some failures. In other words, it was not easy work. But Augustine persevered for about seven or eight years, and then he passed away. So he planted the seeds of the Catholic Christian faith in England. So let's pray that like St. Augustine, my friend, St. Augustine of Canterbury, that when we, in our lives, we have apparent failures, not to get up, not, not to give up, like Eric Lydell that fell down in the race and he got up and he, and he ran the 400 and he won the race. And he ran the race. I invite all of you not to give up, but once we fall, to get, to get up again. And this can also refer to our spiritual life. In our spiritual life, when we fall, we fall into sin. We shouldn't stay down, but try to get up. The parable of the prodigal son, I think we can apply to all of us. We're all weak. We're all tempted. We all fall into sin. But let's, le let's learn like the prodigal son, like Eric Lydell, like St. Augustine, not to stay down, but to get up again. Not to stay down, but to get up again. So now I'd like to move to another missionary. It seemed to be a pretty common theme over the past week or two missionary activity. Even even Saint Philip Mary that Saint Philip Neri that we mentioned earlier. Saint Philip Neri had heard about Saint Francis Xavier who went to the to the Far East to the Indies and to to Japan. Philip Nair wanted to become a missionary. The Pope said, your mission territory is Rome itself. I feel that my mission territory is the huge city, Diocese of Los Angeles. John Paul II said that the, the best modern mission territories are the big cities. There are so many souls that can be saved in the context of a big city. 
There's a lot of evil that happens, a lot of sin. Sometimes you say sin city, but there's a lot of good that can be done also. And as Charles Dickens says, the worst of times can be the best of times. So today we meet with St. Paul. St. Paul has gone from Greek to Athens to Athens. Now he's moving from Athens, Greece, to city of Corinth. City of Corinth was a port city which was known for its immorality and even its prostitution. It was a pagan city where there was a lot of sin. However, God spoke to St. Paul in a vision. And these were the words that Jesus said to St. Paul in a vision. He said, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. How often, my friends, have we been just petrified because of fear? Fear of many things. Even Pope John Paul II, when he started off his pontificate in 1978, he said, do not be afraid to open up your doors to Christ. That's right. Do not be afraid to open up your doors, the doors of your hearts to Christ. So time and time again, you hear in the Gospels, Jesus says, do not be afraid. JP2, do not be afraid. Faustina, do not be afraid. Jesus, I trust in you. Then the following message that Jesus gave to St. Paul is, do not be afraid Go on speaking, go on speaking, and do not be silent. How very important it is, my friends, to speak out. Let's, as we get ready for Pentecost, let's pray for the grace to be able to speak to be able to speak, to be able to speak and preach and teach the Word of God. Philip Neri became the, the, the greatest catech catechist in Rome. He was teaching children and teaching everyone about the love of Christ. St. Paul is going to be doing the same thing. He's going to be preaching and teaching the love of Christ. We have to pray the Holy Spirit to give us light. Praying for the grace to know when to speak, what to say, what words to use, what images to use, what tone of voice to utilize. Who will teach us how to speak the Holy Spirit? The apostles with Peter were tongue-tied, but once the Holy Spirit came on Pentecost, they became valiant soldiers of Christ, such that these apostles who ran away from the cross, there were some of them were even nailed to the, some of them even died crucified, like Peter and Andrew. Because you see the power of the Holy Spirit transforming these men from cowards into courageous soldiers of Christ. From cowards into courageous soldiers of Christ. Cowards into courageous soldiers of Christ. So Jesus appears to Paul in the dream and says, do not be afraid, go on speaking, do not be silent. Then Jesus says, for I am with you. 
Those words, my friends, are very consoling, Jesus says to St. Paul in this vision. I am with you. My friends, if we've been baptized, we've been confirmed, and we are in the state of grace, we're in the state of sanctifying grace, then God, as he was with Paul, God is with you. God is with you. Trust. God is with you. If the Lord is with us, who can be against us? Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom should I fear? The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. I will be with you always, even until the end of time. Do not be afraid, my little flock. These are all words I'm quoting right now from memory of the presence of God with us. And God, go, Jesus goes on to say, No one will attack you. No one will attack you and harm you. Then Jesus says to St. Paul, for I, have, for I have many people in this city. For I have many people in this city. I really believe where we are, where you are right now, in your sphere of influence, I believe that there are individuals in your sphere of influence in, influence that would be open to receiving Christ. I believe that. Where you are, your family, your work, your social network, I believe that probably right now you're thinking about some one person in your mind right now that that needs to be evangelized, to be invited to be invited to follow Christ and the biggest religious group in the country, in the in 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 the in Europe, in the Philippines, in Mexico, are those of non-practicing Catholics. Protestant minister was once said that every non-Christian is a potential Christian. I like that. Every non-Christian, every non-Christian is a potential Christian. So pray as we get ready for the Feast of Pentecost. Pray the Holy Spirit that he'll enlighten you, which you can invite someone to come to church, to come back to Christ. In a certain sense, my friends, by inviting someone to come to Christ, to come to church, to maybe come to confession, you really have nothing to lose. You have nothing to lose, but you also have everything to gain. That's right. You have nothing to lose. You have nothing to lose, but you have everything. Everything to gain. So, As we heard yesterday, Paul was totally absorbed in preaching the Word of God. Preaching the Word of God. And he's going to stay in Corinth for a year and a half preaching the Word of God. There eventually will be a commotion among the Jews. They'll go to Gallio, who is a, the Roman official. And there will be some tension, but Paul's going to stay there for a good year and a half in Corinth, where there indeed will be a lot of believers. 
The responsorial psalm is God is king of all the earth. God is king of all the earth. Now ask yourself a question. Is Jesus Christ, is he ruling in your life? Now is the time to allow Christ to be the king and to rule totally in your life. Allow him to reign in your memory. Allow him to reign in your understanding. Allow him to reign in your imagination. Allow him to reign in your emotions. Allow him to reign in your body. Allow him to reign in your soul. Allow Christ the King to take full possession of your life. Let him take possession of your lives. Once we had a professional baseball player come to our parish to talk to the young people. His name was Mike Sweeney, who played for the Kansas City Royals. He came during for, to our young people for a retreat and he gave them a picture with a tandem bike. Tandem bike would be a double bike, a two-seated bike. And he told the story that when he was playing baseball, he was not playing well, nor was his team, and they were about to release him to go back to the minor leagues. One of his friends gave him a card with a tandem bike. The bike with a seat in the front and the back. He said to him, Mike, you're doing it wrong. Mike, you're doing it wrong. His friend was a Christian. You're doing it wrong. He said, Mike, you see this bike? You're in the front. You're in the front seat, but Jesus is in the back. You have to change positions. Let Jesus in the front seat, let him drive. Let him drive that bike. You get in the back. Allow yourself be, to be led by Christ. So he understood the message and he apparently returned to Christ. Possibly, probably made a good confession and he returned to Christ because he was on the fast road. So once he made that change, allowing Christ to take charge of his life, for Christ to sit in the front seat and he to sit in the back, even his baseball performance radically changed. His manager didn't drop him. He played baseball that year and he hit way over 300, which is huge. Which is huge. He went on to play good baseball the rest of his career, hitting over 300 several seasons. So he told our young people in the confirmation retreat he said look we have to learn this lesson in life you have the tandem bike let's let Jesus sit in the front seat let's let him sit in the front seat and we should get in the back let him drive and we can be the passenger. That really says a lot. So God is the king of all the earth. We want Christ as king to reign over us. 
the gospel today is still taken from the, the it's the last supper discourse and jesus says that we will weep and mourn while the world rejoices we will grieve but our grief will be turned into joy. Jesus is really speaking about what is called the Paschal Mystery. The Paschal Mystery, my friends, is what we're living out now. It's the passion, death, and resurrection of Christ. And as Fulton Sheen goes on to point out, he says, there is no Easter Sunday without the Good Friday. There's no Easter Sunday, there's no resurrection of Christ without it being preceded by Jesus nailed to the cross. That's called the totality of the Paschal Mystery. Then Jesus gives an example that almost all of you will be able to understand. This is the example Jesus gives. And it's the example of a woman in labor. A woman in labor that's about to bring forth her child. Most of you that are in our Perseverance family, most of you women, uh, you're mothers. Some of you are even grandmothers. Call to mind when you're about to have your first child. The fears you experience, the mental anguish, and the day arrived for you to bring, bring forth your child. You were taken to the hospital. You're hoping that the, the child would be born quickly. Maybe it didn't happen that way. In other words, all of you who are mothers, you know what I'm talking about. The whole process of the, of the, of the labor pain, but also preceded by mental anguish and fears and anxiety and worries, all that. Which was prophesied in the first book of the Bible, Genesis, that Man will earn the bread by the sweat of his brow, but the woman will bring forth children in pain. That was one of the consequences of original sin that Adam and Eve committed. However, once your child was born, Once your child was born, after those labor pains, your child was born, then you forget about the pains because the child is born. You have a son or daughter. What joy. Have that little child in your arms and you see the, the, your, your little son's first smile that he gives to you. So Jesus is presenting our life, in a certain sense, the Paschal Mystery can be compared to a woman that's bringing forth a child. So in a larger spiritual sense is this. My friends in Jesus and Mary, our life is short. And we all have to suffer in our lives in one way or another. Part of life is the reality of suffering. We can't deny that. Jesus himself says if we want to be his follower, we must renounce ourselves, take up our cross, and we have to follow him. 
However, the cross is not the last word. Death is not the last word. But rather, the last word is that Jesus Christ is truly risen from the dead. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Jesus Christ is truly risen from the dead. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. And for those who are faithful followers of Christ, he will share with us. He will share with us the glory of the resurrection. So in all of our suffering, our anguish, our pains that we all go through in one way or another, we have to recognize then, my friends, that the end of the road is the victory, the victorious resurrection of Christ, heaven awaits us. Heaven awaits us. So in this month of May, which is dedicated to Mary, and in this very day in which we start the beginning of the Novena to Pentecost, Let us be filled with hope and trust. Because, my friends, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. And Jesus Christ is truly risen from the dead. Alleluia. 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 And I'd like to impart to all of you my priestly blessing. And you pray for me, and I'll pray for you. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Amen.